I cannot begin to tell you guys how many times people over the, these past years have been coming up to me like, Gavin, Gavin, you got to get on the, on, the, on the crypto train. Do you have Bitcoin? Are you doing Bitcoin? Like, I, I, do you know about Bitcoin, Gavin? And I'm like, and I'm like, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know about Bitcoin. I, I'm a nerd, guys. And I was there tinkering with Bitcoin when it was, when it was 30 US dollars per Bitcoin. Not 30,000, 30 dollars. And I, I didn't buy it then. And in retrospect, you know, when it was 50 grand, when it was 20 grand, I'm like, wow, I wish I had bought it. I wish I'd, you know, just bought 300 bucks worth of it when it was, when it was 30 bucks. But seeing into the future is, is another matter. Hindsight's 2020. But even, even though the price skyrocketed, my opinion didn't change. I mean, I was there watching Bitcoin and there was these faucets and you get some free stuff and I was, looking into it. And this was must have been 2009, 2010. I don't even know because when you look at these Bitcoin price things and you look at all, like they don't even go back that far. They go back, to here. this one goes back to where it was like $1,000 and it was $30. But you look here over the past, you know, like three months and, and six months and a year and Bitcoin is, is just crashing. We went from as high as like 70,000 and now what are we down to? 17,000. I remember in 2020 when it crossed 20,000 for the first time and that was huge. And so as these rises and falls comes, and it's kind of similar with Ethereum, right? Doing very similar things with Ethereum, like these rises and falls come and we say, oh, it's crashing, it's the end. And the, the, hard, the diehards are like, no, it's coming back. But it's, it's kind of been in the news this week, you know, crypto meltdown. I mean, obviously news loves sensational headlines. But definitely with this whole FTX going bankrupt, major, major crypto exchange, and just all this stuff going on in the news, and you know, people's people's coin not not being available, people losing their fortunes, uh, and deals falling through. I mean, this Sam Bankman Freed, who was the head of this FTX and it's collapsed and he's lost almost all of his wealth. And I'm assuming a lot of other people, but this this crypto thing goes way back. And it goes far beyond when we had these massive $30,000 spikes. And here's the problem with crypto. The problem with crypto that I always had from when I first started looking at it is, what is what is it? There's nothing here, right? We, we mine, we do all this, at least with silver, right? I still have some silver rounds. And I don't put a whole lot of stock in those either, but a silver I can take and, and it's, it's something real. I can bite it, right? I can, I can have it in my pocket. It's a coin. And even though you could say, well, you can't eat precious metal. Okay, great. Maybe we should just be trading directly and cut out the middleman. But precious metals have had value for most of human history. And I think that's kind of the huge thing. And so when I looked at Bitcoin, it relies on a computer. So it's funny because I had so many you know, of like, you know, my kind of country friends that went from saying all of this stuff, all of this fiat currency, the US dollar is useless, it's just fiat, it's no longer backed by, by silver, right? By gold. And I'm like, well, yeah, you look at history. If you study history, fiat currency will always collapse. The problem with crypto, with Bitcoin, with Ethereum, it's, it's still just a fiat currency. It's a fiat currency, not only that, that you, you can't even hold. You actually have to have working computer systems just to do it. So as the value of that increased and it became relevant, you go back and you had guys like Ross Earlbright in the early days of this making these online marketplaces and stuff. And what did they do? with the, the founder of the Silk Road, Ross Earlbright. He's sitting in prison. They give him multiple life sentences for you know, drugs and distributing and criminal activity. And what that charge really is, because his imprisonment is BS. He may have made some, some bad decisions, but mainly what happened is he crossed the cartel that is the government and they weren't getting their cut. And so this young man, they've still got him locked in a prison, not because he actually went out and, and hurt someone, but because he crossed them. And the past few years, we've seen this on these exchanges, right? People use these exchanges because they're more secure than, than wallets, right? I had some wallets of crypto somewhere, of Bitcoin from the early days when these faucets would give us free crypto. And those still kind of exist, but you got to 
go through all this rigmarole now. It was just easy. You'd literally just go to a site and it would be like, here, have some free crypto. Because it was $30 then, guys. They were trying to promote the idea and get it to grow, which eventually it did. But even then, it didn't have a lot of value. It was kind of like a toy and the government didn't care that much. Well, obviously, when it's worth massive money, when billions of dollars are going through crypto, the government's going to care. And the banks and the, the elites and the banksters and the people that control the networks, they're going to find a way to tax, control, and confiscate, which is exactly what they've done with crypto. And that's the problem. It's another fiat. It's a fiat that arguably we have even less control of than regular fiat and certainly than silver or something. Something like that. At least this, you can you can put it under your bed. Okay, you can have a wallet of crypto and put it under your bed in a, in a thumb drive, right? As long as you remember the password, it's not tangible. You can't trade it with anyone on the street, really. And you have to go through networks and the, that the government controls to actually do it. So I, I think we should have seen the problem from the beginning. And the main thing is that all of this stuff, all of this crypto stuff, whether it goes up or down. And if you can make money on it, that's great. If you've done good on it, that's great. But what I've noticed is the crypto folks, oftentimes they want to come to me like, like I'm an idiot that's never heard of this, right? And be like, well, crypto is going to save us. Crypto is the, is the future, right? Uh, and they want to argue it so passionately, you know, like, like someone that wants to argue the shape of the earth. And I'm like, how about we fight against the abuse happening now and the government actually, you know, killing us? instead of thinking we're gonna be saved by some new technology. How about we love our neighbor now? How about we speak out now? How about we stop voting for political factions and parties? How about we stand up against the police in the streets regardless of who they're abusing, even if we don't like that person? And that is the problem as you look through all of these. Crypto is way up and down because it's, it's based on the whims of news, right? It's based on the whims of of social networks, of TikToks, of news, of what's happening. It's not based on any real inherent value. And who controls those networks, that news and that flow of information? Well, ultimately, the government and their friends as well. And that's why crypto will never save us. It's not real. It's not something tangible. It's not something we can live on. It's not something we can even make things out of like we can a silver or a gold coin. And I'm not here to say, hey, go buy silver or gold. I'm just saying this didn't work. And I think it's time to admit it. I'm not saying don't trade it if you know how to do it and you can make money or you have the resources. But don't don't bet everything you have on this because I don't really see crypto. I can see banks and government adopting crypto and it becoming a form of exchange and they will just co-opt it like everything else and it'll just be another currency. That's what's actually happening. Crypto is just becoming another government controlled mechanism. It's just another fiat currency to control us. And if they can make it work for that, that's fine. And if they can't and it doesn't serve their purposes, they'll send the people who are causing them problems to prison, just like they did with Ross. So I think ultimately we have to stand up, we have to resist and love our neighbor. Otherwise, otherwise we're nowhere with silver or gold or crypto or, or anything. All right, you guys, just wanted to talk about that because it's kind of going around this week, the crypto crash. And yeah, it's, it's just not that revolutionary. It's not that revolutionary.